Hey buddy, my name is Christiane and welcome to my channel Backpacking Bananas. I'm currently in Koh Samui but on a boat and me and my boyfriend Jeremy are off to Koh Panyang which is going to be our next destination backpacking Thailand. There's actually a few different ferries that you can take that go from various different piers on Koh Samui and arrive at a couple of different piers on Koh Panyang. We went for a fast ferry, so we paid a little bit more. This was 350 baht for a 30 minute ferry, which is going to take us from near the big Buddha in Koh Samui, I think near Bang Rak Pier, and it's gonna take us to the Thong Sala Pier on the Koh Panyang side. Bye bye Koh Samui. Koh Panyang is an island that is famous for the full moon party. And I'll be honest, when I came to Thailand nine years ago, I came to Koh Panyang for the reason of going to the full moon party, which is located down on Hardran Beach. And it really is like a massive bucket list thing to do while you're in the country. We timed this trip kind of badly because the full moon party is in two weeks time and I don't think we're gonna stay on Koh Panyang for two weeks. And so in this vlog and in this time on the island, we're not gonna be going to the full moon party, but we're just gonna be seeing what else the island of Koh Panyang has to offer because there's actually a lot more going on than just the full moon party. I mean, half moon party, jungle party, all the other parties, but also the island is full of so many amazing beaches and there's waterfalls and things to see. I know that there's a really nice digital nomad community here. And so for the next week or so, however long we spend on this island, that is what we are going to be exploring and showing you. Our first few days on Koh Panyang, I'll be honest, we haven't been doing much at all, uh, mostly because I've needed to get work done and we've really just been chilling and relaxing after the super crazy time we had in Koh Samui. For the first three days, we have been staying at Bodega Hostel, which is a real party hostel and the reason we chose this was one the location with it being right on the beach you literally just walk out of your room straight into the ocean it's just amazing uh, but also it's a party hostel although we're not really here to have like a crazy wild party in my opinion party hostels are so good for meeting other people in such an easy way they're normally the most extroverted people yeah that's why we chose to stay here you've got these gorgeous hammocks on the beach this is like a tree house in a humongous tree i think it's an abandoned tree house though i don't think anyone actually stays there we have been in this hut right here. They're cleaning our room already now, but we had a hut with air conditioning and an ensuite with hot water. And this was 1000 baht per night. So 500 baht per person, which is pretty affordable considering the location. You have a pool here. I know they have lots of dorm rooms up here. Here you have like a reading nook. And then this is the main chill out area, which has a snooker table over here. And this gets very, very packed in the evening, very loud with lots of music and drinks. If you are wanting to have like a wild time on Koh Panyang, especially if you're coming here for the full moon party, this is a really, really great place to stay. If you are someone who does not like parties, you don't like loud music and you just want to have a really chill time, this is not where you want to stay. Also something to note is that the Wi-Fi has not been that good in this hostel. It's not been a big deal because there's so many cafes and things nearby and this is really well located that you can get good Wi-Fi, but in the hostel itself, the Wi-Fi is pretty shit. We've now moved to the other side of the island, which I've never stayed on this part before. It's like the Had Yao area. There's a beach here called Had Yao. There's actually lots of beaches around. And Jeremy found this hostel called Shirali, or Shirali, I don't know how you pronounce it. And it looked really, really nice. So that's where we've chosen to stay. And I'm gonna give you a little tour because it's actually super, super beautiful. As you look around here, you can see there's lots of different little bungalows and huts and these are all the different accommodation types so we decided to go for the most expensive accommodation option just because it really looked the nicest it's this row of bungalows just here they're called the palm valley bungalows and normally it's 1000 baht per night for one of these but i asked if they had any promo codes and they said that they'd give it to me for 900 baht a night so that's what we are paying so let's go inside 
on our balcony. We have a hammock. Jeremy has just done some washing, so he's hanging up his clothes. We've got somewhere to put our shoes. A nice little seating area outside, which if I'm completely honest, we haven't actually used yet. And then going inside double bed there and this is is almost like another bed but it's kind of much harder so it's sort of a sofa area but to be completely honest we've just been unpacking our bags here and just laying them out so we can see everything that we've got possibly my favorite part is the fact that I have an entire workstation here I can completely spread out I've been able to plug in all of my things this is where I've been doing my work tea coffee station over here it didn't actually come with tea and coffee it just came with the kettle so we bought our our own coffee but they give you mugs and cups and stuff we've just been using them a mini fridge a wardrobe and then in here we have an ensuite bathroom it's not overly exciting but it has hot water and now I'll take you on a little walk down to the main common area and bar and restaurant. It has a different name, it's called Hideout Bar and Restaurant, but it's all part of the Shirley business, let's say, I don't know what to call it. To be honest, we have been eating and drinking here for at least one meal almost every day because it's really, really good, really good quality food. The prices are all right, they're not super expensive. So I believe these ones are called the Coconut Heights bungalows. They're a little bit cheaper because I just don't think they're quite as modern as our ones. These are the communal toilets. Possibly the coolest thing about this hostel is it has its own entire gym. I'll show you a little bit of footage from the other day when we spent a bit of time in here, but Jeremy's been coming here every day. Wow. Yeah, I think it's the only reason. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow, you improved a lot. <laughs> Moving back on up, that was the bar and restaurant area. Let's take you over to the pool. And that is about it. It's huge and it's absolutely stunning. Very easy just to stay here for a long time and relax. There's a nice friendly atmosphere as well. It's definitely not like a crazy party hostel, but we're not really on the crazy party part of the island. It's really, really great. Highly recommend if you're gonna be staying on this side of Koh Phangan, like not if you're going to the full moon because we're a little bit far from where the full moon party is. But if you're gonna be staying on this side of the island, highly recommend this hostel. We've come to Coco Locos, which is like right in the middle of Hadyao Beach. And it is so, so lovely here. They have a pool, also a pool table, and you can just hang out. Got ourselves a coconut. I found looking at the menu that the Western food looks really overpriced, but then when you get to the Thai menu, it's actually very, very affordable and kind of normal prices like everywhere else. And so I've gone for a chicken fried rice for 120 baht. I'll be honest, we've been a little bit unlucky with the weather since arriving in Koh Phangan. It's been a little bit rainy and stormy most days but today it looked a little bit more promising so we've decided to have a little bit of a exploring afternoon to some of the beaches on this side of the island like the west side because we're located near Had Yao but there's lots of lovely looking little beaches here there and everywhere so the first place we've come I think is Ko Ma beach and it's super super cool a super super like classic Thailand scene because you've got this sandbar which leads up to another island. How cool is that? Behind us we have like a restaurant and there's even a whole like Komar beach resort where you can stay. Little sand area here so I guess we'll put our bits down here 
and then go for a swim, go up to that sandbar. Ooh, it is a bit cold, isn't it? And here we are. Such a cool place. I, I freaking love places like this. It feels like nature just did a great job. A great job at making something looking extra beautiful. Jeremy says this is the smallest beach he has ever been to. <laughs> oh, the water looks amazing as well. So clear. This looks or reminds me a little bit of like the beaches in Panama from Central America. And this is what it looks like looking back at Copenhagen in the distance. I actually had no idea that there was like a beach island like this. So it's been a really nice surprise. The next stop is Salad Beach. Honestly, neither of us knew anything about this. We just saw it on Google Maps and thought, oh, let's go to that beach there. So much so that we didn't even know how to enter. We just entered in through Salad Beach Private Resort. They didn't say anything about, about us walking through, so hopefully it was okay. It's a beautiful beach. Nothing particularly special going on here. Just incredibly calm and serene water. Very, very still. People have got a a stand-up paddleboard out which looks really nice yeah i'd describe this as an incredibly peaceful beach i don't know why it's called salad beach but the details are unnecessary the weather has really been controlling us in Copenhagen because every day it says it's just going to rain all day and so we haven't been getting out too much and um, I mean it's been good for the work purposes I've been getting lots done at the bungalow in Shirali today we were like you know what it's not actually raining every day that's just what the weather forecast says we're in a tropical environment it could be sunny it could be raining it's just about taking a chance so that's what we've done today and we've come to a beach that we've been really wanting to visit because it's supposedly the best on the island are the most beautiful. It's called Chalo Clum Beach. And just before we head to the beach itself, we come to a little restaurant which is right beside it called Kaif, K-A-I-F. Just ordered some food. I did bring my laptop as well, just in case it does downpour and we end up just staying in this restaurant all day, but that's okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is wild. I didn't realize that it came with chips as well, so I ordered a side of chips. And that is an amazing amount of food. What did you go for, Jeremy? This is often much more healthy than your food. Yeah, well, look, I'm not here for judgment. <laughs> and here is the beautiful Cello Club Beach. was absolutely glorious. We've become a little bit of uh, water snobs here in Thailand because if it's ever not like warm, we're like, oh, it's cold. It's not cold at all. It's absolutely glorious. I can see why this beach is considered one of the most beautiful. The sand is super fine and white and powdery and soft, and it stays like that all the way into the water, which is mostly clear and mostly blue there's a fair bit of seaweed hanging around but it still feels very nice to swim in and then you've got the towering mountains out to the side and the palm trees you've got some lovely little restaurants along the beach as well so there's something that you can eat and drink it's an all-round very nice place to be honestly Copenhagen has just been such a wonderful place to chill there are so many lovely cafes and restaurants which we have been exploring the beaches are just stunning and just so chill and there's no pressure to spend your whole day here or you, you know spend as little or as much time here as you want and I think we really are getting stuck in the trap of being somewhere which you just feel you just kind of settle into and then you don't want to leave yeah we've been here for like over a week and a half now and it looks like the full moon party is coming back around and we're probably going to be going to it, which is hilarious because it so was not our plan when we arrived on the island. C'est la vie, we're enjoying our time here and we have found out that we can extend our visas up to like four months in Thailand without leaving and it's because of having a COVID extension. Yeah, we've just, we've just been chilling here and no complaints. Oh, 
over it's gonna get so dirty oh no don't run my hat over don't run it over oh thank god all righty careful okay <laughs> got it wow <laughs> that's not good we should have known this but the day before the full moon, we hadn't booked another night at our accommodation and it got fully booked. So this morning we essentially got kicked out. We had to quickly book a new accommodation and typical, it's just been rain all day. So this is the situation. Yep. So I'm gonna drop my bags at the next accommodation. Then I'm gonna go back, pick up Jeremy and his bags and then hopefully <laughs> we'll be settled into the new place. Here it is, I made it safely to our next accommodation in the not so optimal driving conditions. Uh, we're just staying at this place called Pratchan House. So I'll go check in here, drop my bags and then go fetch Jeremy. I kind of just want to lay down after that journey and relax, but I need to go pick up Jeremy who's still at Shirley. I'll put back on my Mac. Luckily, I don't have to take my big bag with me this time. Hopefully I don't get too wet. This place is cute. I think we paid like 700 baht a night for this. It's very small, very basic, but a lovely green view outside of our window. It's very cozy in here. Okay, we've just arrived at our hotel, which is like on Hardwind Beach. So we are fully ready for the full moon, which was not the plan at the start of the video, but here we are. So anyway, I'm gonna end the video here. I'm gonna make a whole video of our time over the next 24 hours at the full moon party. <laughs> um, I don't know what my vlogging skills are gonna be like after a few drinks, but we'll give it our best shot. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I will see you in the next one on the full moon party. Bye bye.